bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Idrath Core I Roll Sazir, Northbridge. And as you can see, just down here in the caves, we're dealing with some frogs. Handily too, might I add. Much more handily than usual, thanks to our traps, which we now have fully in place. Yet, yeah, they seem to be getting the job done pretty darn well, I'd say. Each of these traps consists of a single mechanism, as well as a serrated iron disc, many of which are masterwork crafted by Logum, of course. Yeah, it's a very handy way to defend ourselves. I don't think we'll have to be worrying about these amphibian people much anymore, though we did have to have some soldiers rush in and clean up the stragglers, so maybe a couple more iron traps couldn't hurt. That'll be easy enough, but we'll see if we get around to it. I'm pretty content with how this is working. Anywho, time to start cleaning up these corpses and uh, melting down these weapons and shields. We can certainly put that metal to use. Anywho, right at the current time it is the 11th of Obsidian, late winter of 112. We're still in our fifth year, but just about to start our sixth. And as you can see right there, the seas have just thawed out. And by the way, we were thankfully able to clear out this tomb here for little stack HUD, remember? We weren't able to quite finish it a couple years back. It's all set now though. Rest well, little one. There are quite a few other projects I would have liked to get done while the sea was frozen. We'll have to save them to next year at this point, but man, we have been dawdling a bit. A quick overview, our population right now is 165 dwarves. And they're happy enough for now. Always striving to do our best, that's for sure. And you know what's going to make them much happier? Is if we get to work putting them in their rooms on the bridge, finally. Really, we haven't been doing a good job at that, frankly. Like if we look over here to the western side of the bridge, up here we have six rooms, four of which are filled up. Down below we have 12 more on this level, eight of which are filled up. And below that, 12 more, eight of which are filled up. So that's 20 bedrooms in place. I'm not sure how many dwarves that is exactly, but we'll say maybe 24 of them, just, you know, counting couples and stuff who are living in the same bedroom. But that's four, eight, nine, ten bedrooms over here that we have not finished yet. We need to get dwarves in there. And that's not even addressing the eastern side of the bridge where we don't really have anybody living quite yet, which is terrible. We have 12 bedrooms on this level, 12 more above that, and then six above that, two of which have dwarves in them. But my goodness, we have room to put dwarves in these places. Just have not yet done it yet because it's pretty finicky. It takes some time to do it, you know, just because we're trying to be very careful. Got to make sure every dwarf's bedroom is top tier. We're really trying our best to do that. Of course, that does mean that dwarves without bedrooms do have to live down here in the old quarters, which isn't the best. These poor bastards have two by two bedrooms, each with only a bed and cabinet. Certainly not as nice as the bridge rooms, but at least they do have that mist there. Remember, we were talking about that earlier. I think before building any more bedrooms, really, we're gonna start trying to get dwarves in place. We kinda got it. And maybe, maybe, we should also start thinking of a way to get mist up onto the bridge. It's kind of a daunting prospect, but you know, I have a feeling it's not gonna be as daunting as we might think. I mean, we do have the sea right there. Shouldn't be too difficult to suck some water up and put it in a cistern, I would think. Of course, time will tell. Yeah, we'll try to think up something. Anywho, moving on now. We have just rolled over into a new year. Right now it is the 6th of Granite, 113. And isn't it just lovely out there? Starting to get warm outside. Seeing a lot more green. Some goblin snatchers have wandered in and have been killed just that quick. Pesky bastards. Ah, but yes, with this fresh new year, we're getting some fresh new ideas, thanks to those bastard elves. Who else is getting kind of sick of being cooped up in this stuffy old bridge? We have to go out and appreciate the woodland. Just make sure to bring your axes. <laughs> Let's get to clear cutting, dwarves. Yes, there we go. I figure we'll start on the western coast here. Just clear down every single last one of these trees. And after that's done, I was considering salting the earth, but that might be a bit too wasteful. Yeah, we'll just make sure no full-grown trees pop up anymore. We'll grab that wood as soon as it sprouts from the earth. And what we're going to do with this wood, actually, well, as you can see right here, we've started building some craft dwarf workshops just along our bridge. Quite a few of them, too. You may be able to see that. Because, I mean, we're always complaining year after year of we have nothing to trade, nothing to trade. But what the hell, why not turn all these beautiful trees into beautiful wooden crafts? Chop down the trees, turn that useless wood into something aesthetically pleasing, and then we can trade it away to the dwarves and humans for more food and all kinds of other stuff, too. It's pretty perfect, really. And you know, we were making a big stink about not having enough charcoal, right? And we can still turn some of this into charcoal, but something I've failed to mention is that we also have a lot of coal in the area, bituminous coal, and even lignite, a whole bunch of this stuff. And we could just easily turn that into coke. Might as well. We don't even need charcoal anymore. We're free to 
waste this forest in any manner we see fit. And so yes, we're getting straight to that, pumping out heaps of crafts already. And um, well, it looks like there's a bit of a disturbance down underground again. Some more damn frogs, it looks. We have one down here just uh, stabbed a peasant, but was killed by a group of peasants. Okay. And as is usually the case, I'm sure there are quite a few more around, though we are not seeing any quite yet. Rather, we are seeing an awful lot of blood here, which means the bastards are probably trying to sneak through the tunnel. Just can't see them yet, you know? That's okay, though. We have warriors on the way. Can't be many of them, I wouldn't think. Not seeing a lot of activity. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there are quite a few of them, actually. Like an awful lot of them. Well, nothing we can't handle, that's for sure. Just wipe them out, dwarves. Yeah, these frogs are getting easier and easier, thanks to these traps. But to have two attacks like this so close together, it's kind of scary. Not gonna lie. Especially when we have frogs getting past the traps and attacking our peasants, you know? Yeah, we're gonna have to start putting out some more traps soon, I think. Couldn't hurt. Anywho, back to it, dwarves. And keeping up with our recent string of interruptions. It looks like we have something else up on the surface to tend to. We, um... Huh. I wonder what that was. Strange. But, oh, uh... Anyways, looks like we have another migrant wave here, in a manner of speaking. Though, this is no normal migrant wave, to be sure. In fact, our ruler has arrived with a full entourage. It's Athel Great Tours, our king. Our thriving site is now the capital, and with continued fortune and toil, the legend of a true mountain home may yet be written. Wow, hey, bit of a surprise there. Uh, it would have been pretty cool if we could have prepared things better for our king and his entourage, but here we are. Uh, dwarves, get to it. Immediately. Please. Uh, sir, come, come, come right in. Northbridge and, of course, Idrath's glory awaits. Yes, this is a fascinating turn indeed. In fact, it looks like there's a whole bunch of dwarves here that came alongside him too, including the queen, of course, as well as a few champions, like really skilled and well-armored soldiers. Wonderful, we could put them to use for sure. Uh, I am curious and a little concerned about the sheer number of arrivals in this particular wave. We were at 165, but that number is swiftly rising to 191. Goodness gracious, 26 dwarves to house and feed now. Oof, okay. Get to pumping out those wooden crafts, dwarves. We're gonna have to buy a lot more food and drink when those traders arrive. But yes, uh, Athel, good to have you here. We are proud and extremely grateful to receive the mantle of Mountain Home, and we do look forward to making sure we deserve that title too. Ah, uh, but yes, accommodations must be made, quickly too. And we're gonna start work up here in our tower, the very top level of the tower. And we are ashamed to admit that we don't have anything particularly valuable to make your quarters out of, sir. But for now, we hope you'll accept iron. I really wish we had some of that platinum left around, but we do not. But as a consolation, we're gonna make every square inch of this quarters out of iron. Plenty of that laying around, and it is valuable enough, that's for darn sure. Iron walls, iron floors, iron tables, thrones, statues, everything. And maybe a few other touches too, we gotta get some clear glass windows in here I think might be very nice. And maybe an artifact too? It would be appropriate. I hope this is suitable for you and your wife. We aim to make you as comfortable as possible, my liege. Ah, uh, but yes, we are feeling good, and, uh, well, to add to that, we just received word that we've made a new artifact here at Northbridge, so let's have a look. It was created by Arush Aslanitev, one of our carpenters, and she named it Ratir Garid Sodiltang, an apricot wood chest. She claims it as a family heirloom. That's fair enough, it's yours to do with as you please. It's your artifact. That is the first artifact not given to Northbridge, though. Just an interesting point. Its name translates to Blenched Rhythm, the Misty Fork and it's worth 52,000, which is pretty stunning. This is a apricot wood chest. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with radiant cut sapphires and oval cut praises. It is also decorated with turkey bone and encircled with bands of alpaca wool, cushion conglomerate capuchons, and baguette cut rubies. This object menaces with spikes of sapphire. On the item is an image of a kiwi man in apricot wood. That is very cool. A proper artifact indeed, and in fact, if you have a look at her bedroom, it is already in place, nice and snug in its new home. You know, I got pretty excited at first because I was thinking of maybe putting it in the king's bedroom or something like that, but because she's claiming it as a family heirloom, we shouldn't do that. It'll be hers. 
and because it's such a valuable artifact, I think currently she probably has one of the most highly valued bedrooms in the entire fortress. Fairly stunning. You know, I do sort of hope this doesn't start a trend with our dwarves. I do really enjoy receiving these as gifts that we can do with as we please. But again, they can do whatever they want with them. They're their artifacts. We'll just have to keep our hopes high for the next one. Man, oh man, having a look up here, you can see these dwarves are still very busy at work making all those wooden crafts. We are quickly burning through that entire forest, turning every twig and branch into a beautiful little craft. Something a tad more functional than some stupid wooden post standing out in the forest. I mean, what is a tree, really? What can you do with it? Not much. It's good to be putting those things to use. Though, admittedly, these crafts aren't really worth that much. <laughs> nah, it's fine. As long as it disturbs the elves. <laughs> Stupid bastards. Anywho, having a look up to the top of our tower, you can see the king's quarters coming right along. Again, made entirely of iron. But you can even see a few of those clear glass windows in place. Highly valuable. This will be a stunning quarters. A proper kingly quarters when it's all done. Big problem now, though, is that we have to get a roof on it, too. Can't really say it's a royal quarters without a roof, right? And the furniture, too. Actually, I think a lot of the furniture is already made. just has to be dragged up here. Those poor dwarves. Ooh, also notice right down here we have a platinum door in place. This is a Tad Shedem, that first artifact that we made here in Northbridge. I'm glad that finally has a home. We figured what the hell that'd be perfect, right? And it certainly is. And actually, while we're up in the tower, heading down a couple levels right here, you can see the Temple for the Order of Silver, one of the denominations of Idrath's faith. It's pretty well appointed. Mostly gypsum, but we do have a bunch of gold statues in there too, as well as a couple of gold doors. It's not really quite up to their standards yet. <laughs> you know, I think I was mentioning before that we did have a temple for these guys down in the mines, and they thought that one was better, even though it was completely unadorned. It was just in the soggy old mines. But in order to make up for it, I had put Taj Shittim, that platinum door, in their former mine temple there. Just kind of goes to show you how uh, unhinged dwarves can be with their wants and desires sometimes. They'd rather have a completely unadorned temple down in the mines, filled with mud and water, as long as there's one really nice artifact down in there. <sighs> dwarves, we're going to keep pecking away at it. Actually, right over here, you can see Kogsak, the high wealth of the Order of Silver. She's the one who leads this religious order. She was ordained last year, I think, when we first put the temple up in the tower. Hasn't been here for all too long, but she is ambitious. That would explain how she climbed herself up to this rank so quickly. As an additional note, she tends to like snow demons for their horrifying features. I don't know what that is, and I'm hoping we never see one here. Idrath willing, we won't have the chance. Keep at it there, Cog. You know, back to this temple here. It is great that we have a place for these people to worship. But we have so many different groups in the fortress right now. I want to say there's like five guilds or something. Like remember, we have the farmer's guild down here, the jet one, which isn't used all that much, by the way. Mildly aggravating. And then we have the ranger's guild over here, remember? But then we have ones that we've kind of skimped on a little bit, like the crafts dwarf guild hall over here. Uh, as you can see, it's not really a guild hall at all. It's the memorial to the second amphibian attack. We just kind of were like, yeah, you guys can meet in that area. They think it's fine right now. We actually put that uh, artifact thrown in there off to the side. Get the job done. And then down here in the mines in the former temple area I was talking about, we have the metalsmiths guild hall. Again, it's acceptable, but <laughs> as you can see, it's really quite muddy and terrible too. I'm pointing these areas out because we need a, a more permanent place for our actual guild halls. I was saying that we could put them up in the tower for a bit, but I'm not sure if that would quite cut it. I think the guild hall should be closer to the jobs that they perform, you know? Like say we have a craft dwarf guild hall that should be near where we make crafts, or like, you know, a more central area anyways to where we make crafts. Or like a farmer's guild hall, we don't actually do any farming here in the fortress, but we gather lots of plants, we shear a lot of alpacas, all farming duties. Well, I'm thinking we're going to have a lot of guild halls below ground. And so the first thing I really want to do is make a path like that one up on the bridge that goes below ground. But up here to the north, we're going to do pretty much the same exact thing. And we have to wait till winter. Got to have that water frozen, you know. But this winter, I think as soon as winter strikes, or as soon as the water freezes at least, we're going to get right to work. We've been making a lot of rock blocks. And so we're going to try to slap up something grand really quickly. Just got to give it some time, but be ready for it. It's going to be amazing. Ah, but yes, that's a winter concern. Right now, though, we're still in early summer. And as you can see, the humans have just arrived, and there's quite a flurry of activity in the area, mostly due to the fact that we're bringing all those wooden crafts over. And there are a whole bunch of them, too. I'm really hoping we can get something good for them. But again, they are not worth all that much at all. So we shall see, I suppose. Just a moment. Okay. Okay. That'll do it. 
We have concluded our trade with the humans, and it did go very well, ultimately. But we also kind of had a giant pain in the ass during it, too. It turns out that uh, King Athel is a big fan of rings. And I will tell you that we've made an awful lot of wooden rings this year, all mixed in with the bracelets and the scepters and the amulets. So we had to go in by hand and take out every single ring from those bins. Couldn't trade those. I mean, the king's got his prerogative, he's our monarch, and we are oh so happy to see to his needs, but uh, it, it was a ordeal, we'll say. That being said, we're gonna make sure to pre-pick those things out of there, maybe make a new ring stockpile somewhere else. We are not going through that again. Still though, when it's all said and done, we got a ton, ton, ton of food from the humans. Like, a real lot, which is just great. Remember, I was saying, uh, I was a little concerned about our food stockpiles just because of the sheer number of dwarves that came in that last migrant wave. Up to 192 now, remember. But we should be fine. We should be fine. Here's hoping, at least. Anywho, time is marching ever forward, trying to get as much done as we can before winter arrives. And it really hasn't been the easiest because there's been no lack of interruptions. Like down in the caverns here, we were attacked by the amphibians again, this time from the east. The traps took care of most of them till the soldiers arrived, but when the soldiers did arrive, we found that there wasn't nearly as many frogs as usual, and that was because some of them apparently hung back. You could see the majority of the siege over here in the water, just kind of submerged like a bunch of creeps. Honestly, couldn't really blame them. They probably don't know how to handle this situation. They know they've lost countless warriors at this point, probably not in a rush to lose any more. Of course, I don't know why they don't just go away. They could do that. Though I guess if they're staying down in the water, it's probably fine. Puts us on edge, though. We don't know what their plans are, if they're going to come rushing up at some point. For now, we have the eastern caverns kind of locked away. Dwarves are forbidden from entering. Nothing important out there anyways. Presently, up here on the surface, we're apparently getting attacked by the goblins again, but it's a small siege. Kind of like that small archer squad we had show up that time. Only six goblins or so. Not a biggie. Really, when you get down to it, the goblins don't know how to fight. I know I've stated this in the past, but they are terrible fighters. Not much to talk about, really. We might be in trouble if they come in numbers, but if they keep attacking us like this, then we can easily deal with them. In other violent news, we also had a... A uh, bit of a scuffle over this way here with a panda that our peasants killed. Luckily, nobody was seriously injured, but a lot of them just kind of piled on and beat the thing to death. Took them a bit, but it was finally killed. Little trouble, really. Might get the thing butchered up. Looks to be good, Ian. And in less violent news, we also had an artifact made. And it looks to be a pretty... Huh. That sound again. Keep those ears open, dwarves. Gotta figure out what that is. Uh, anyways, uh, the artifact, right. We'll have a quick look at it. Eresh von Stizrigoff, the miller, has created Gasmerthidas, a gypsum amulet, which she offers to the wealthy order. Back on track, I like it. Its name translates to the Umbral Frill, and it's worth 12,500. Not bad for an amulet. This is a gypsum amulet. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rectangular jet cabochons, encircled with bands of apricot wood and rectangular yellow jasper cabochons, and it's also adorned with hanging rings of cave spider silk and menaces with spikes of donkey bone and carnelian. Also on the item is an image of dwarves in gypsum. The dwarves are laboring. A nod to the founding of Northbridge here in the year 108. Fantastic. Also on the item is an image of Mappy Boring Leader, the Goblin, and Galka Clasp Forest, the Human, in Gypsum. Galka, the Human, is striking down Mappy Boring Leader, the Goblin. Okay. Also on the item is an image of Dumed Dorkult, the Dwarf, and Dwarves in Steel. Dumed is surrounded by the Dwarves. That image relates to the ascension of the Dwarf Dumed, our first queen, who became queen in the year one. And to finish it up, there's also an image of Helms in Llama Bone. That there is one hell of an intricate artifact. I have rarely seen such intricate artifacts. Four distinct images on it. Impressive, terrifying. And big kudos to you, Arush, for putting all those tedious little images on there. It seems like it must have been a giant pain to get all those details right and to figure out where everything could have gone. Kudos to you and your overwhelming skill. And from that, moving back over to some violent news regarding our military dwarf known as the Stab Brother. Guy's been in a pretty foul mood lately, getting depressed, which as we've said in the past, a lot of our military dwarves seem to be in a pretty poor mental state. So we haven't had them training for a while, but that doesn't seem to quite be doing it. 
Most of them are holding together relatively well though, but our stab brother friend over here actually hauled off and got in a fist fight with another of our dwarves, an animal dissector. Not good news. And because of his depression and his fist fighting, we've decided to take this stab brother out of the military entirely. He's just going to get worse if we keep him in there. And so yes, he is retired now with full honors. And because we did that, now we only have nine dwarves protecting our fortress of nearly 200 kind of stupid so we made another military squad finally dubbed the anvil squad they're going to be led by burr medtabuzar a recent migrant to the fortress she's a fish cleaner but she's also a pretty good tactician so i think she's going to do fine we'll just give her some time and training and i'm sure she'll get these dwarves whipped into shape before long after all that's pretty much what we did with our last squad and they turned out to be some fine warriors good luck with them burr i'm sure you'll do great hey who we are charging straight forward Desperate for that sea to freeze so we can continue with our outdoor plans. Right now it's the 15th of Timber, late autumn in 113. Winter is right around the corner. The dwarven traders have already come and gone. We didn't really get to do much trading with them. Turns out we're entirely out of wooden crafts now. We did have a few left to give them, but really not that much. Still got a whole bunch of rings though. Can't trade those. That's fine though. We'll figure out something to do with them. And besides, I suppose we could make some more wooden crafts. In fact, that tree right there? Well, it's pretty much all of them over here on the western coast. Yet yeah, we've clear-cut this entire section of forest. In fact, most of that wood that was over here is what went into those crafts. So there's really not that much wood left over here, but there's plenty over here in the east. As you can see, we've cut down this entire stretch of forest as well. Pretty impressive. Pretty quick, actually. Yeah, we've cut it all down, and now it's just kind of sitting around. We did put some of it in stockpiles, but in fact, you can see this stockpile over here. It's all kind of filled up right now, and... Well, it's got no place to go, really. <laughs> we are going to do something with it this winter, I think. We have a fisher's guild here in the fortress, and they need a new guild hall. More on that in a bit. Just really excited to see that sea freeze. It's going to be great. Anywho, back to the fortress here, where it looks like we have another artifact made. These things are really starting to pile up. We'll go quickly through it. Nil Obakedos, an animal trainer, has created Lokunner Nidost Itat, a limonite bracelet. He offers it to the wealthy order. Wonderful. Let's have a closer look. Its name translates to Rise Lakes, the ferocity of chilling, and it's worth 15,000. Not terrible. This is a limonite bracelet. All craft ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion limonite cabochons, rectangular jet cabochons, and rose-cut yellow jaspers. It's also encircled with bands of square-cut clear tourmalines. This object menaces with spikes of jet, goat bone, moss agate, and yellow jasper. On the item is an image of Longland Grass in bronze, as well as an image of Dumad Dork Cult, the dwarf, and dwarves in yellow jasper. Dumad is surrounded by the dwarves. Another portrayal of our queen who rose to power in year one. Fantastic. Thank you very much, friend. We'll get this put somewhere special. We really should create a proper museum at some point, shouldn't we? We'll have to add it to the list, I suppose. On a different subject, just really quick. Back down to the caves. I nearly forgot to mention it, but we were attacked by the amphibian people again for the fourth time this year. It's getting a little ridiculous, I think. Though they really haven't given us that much trouble. And this time the entire group was destroyed. So all in all, we've probably killed off maybe somewhere in the range of 170 amphibian people this year. It has been an absolute boon for us getting all those spears and shields, but my goodness, it can be dangerous. They do get through those trap halls, but luckily the warriors are always at hand. In fact, you know, come to think of it, they've never managed to kill any of our dwarves, have they? There's been a couple of bad woundings, but that's really about it. Still kind of a hassle. We might just make those trap halls a little bit longer at some point and be done with the worry. We just figured I'd keep you updated. Might give a year's end rundown of the amphibian attacks from now on, just to keep it more succinct. Hate to keep jumping back down here to see the carnage, especially when there's nothing much to talk about. That other group is still over here, by the way, just sitting down in the water. I don't know what the hell their plan is. Very sneaky. Anyways, back up here on the surface, we're still waiting for things to freeze up. It is the third of Moonstone currently. Shouldn't take too, too much longer. Actually, if you have a gander down this way here, you can see these ponds, which are frozen solid right now. These always tend to freeze shortly before the ocean. Makes sense, I suppose. Uh, well... Let's hold on now a second. Looks like we have some visitors here in the fortress. Some elves. Looking for some trouble too, it seems. Luckily, they were spotted though, sneaking over the bridge by Ezem Regmarol up here. She saw them out there while she was eating. Those gem windows are pretty handy. Yeah, it just appears to be a couple of elves here. Nothing really to worry about. As we've seen in the past, their armor is all wood. Their weapons too. Couldn't really pose much of a threat to us. The lead one is shooting now, and here comes the dwarves, who are already assembled. 
Oh, hold up now. They uh, appear to have brought some war leopards this time, which have been dealt with handily. The elves really couldn't stand much of a chance against the dwarves. Maybe if they picked up some metal armaments or something, but as they are, they're far too frail. Pitiful, really. Well, I'm not sure what else those elves have planned. There could be more sneaking about. So we're not in a big rush to get these dwarves back in the fortress yet. We'll just keep them stationed at the main gate for now. Better safe than sorry, right? Good job, by the way, dwarves. Actually, hold up a moment here. Having to look over to the west, we could see a line of elves just kind of waiting over here. They're at the very western edge of our fortress bounds, probably looking over the destroyed forest, probably weeping. You poor bastards. Notice, though, they're not moving. I don't know why that would be. They're just kind of stationed up here, taunting us, perhaps. I'd be willing to believe it. Well, I would much prefer they try to attack us on the bridge, keep things more structured that way. We'll, we'll wait a minute here, see what their plans are. In the meantime, I suppose we'll get this mess sorted out. I was really hoping we could butcher up these cats, get some free food that way, you know? But having a hard time with it for some reason, cleaning up some of this blood, at least. Gotta keep things nice and tidy, you know? I'm just hoping our warriors can keep things together for now. We've talked about their terrible moods before, and Croaks was just throwing a fit out here. A little bit of a tantrum. Honestly, I'd rather have them fighting the other soldiers than peasants. These guys have armor. Try to keep it together, dwarves. Oh, hey, would you look there? Just got cold enough for the sea to freeze. Well, dwarves, the elves are still out there, but we have to get to work. I'm hoping those bastards just stay over to the side. Don't see why they wouldn't. Probably just to be safe, though, we should make uh, some new traffic routes. Don't really want the dwarves going too close to those elves, which they are currently, but doesn't seem to be a problem. Anywho, the dwarves are going to carefully come over here where you can see we've planned out a large area to be dug out. First thing we're going to do is clear out this area entirely, and then we're going to start building up the walls just so we can keep the water out. Yeah, it'll take a bit of doing for sure, but I'm fairly confident we can get it done. Worst comes to worst, we'll have to continue it next year, but we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. Yeah, progressing nicely. Pretty straightforward so far anyways. Got those tunnels and stairs dug out. And a battalion of dwarves have emerged from the fortress carrying blocks of stone. Just getting them in place now. Note too, they're going over the other side of the bridge now. Nice and safe. And it's going quicker than expected as well. We've dug out the stairs, cleared out places for the walls, and have already got a substantial amount of stone in place. It's going very well, actually. And the elves out in the snow now have not moved the slightest inch. Haughty bastards. Considering going out and showing them what's what. In fact, you know what? I don't suppose it would hurt to get a little closer. I mean, what are they going to do to us anyways with their wooden weapons? Well, dwarves, what do you say? When do you want to check it out? Ah, yes, looks like Cursed Crag is heading out. A brave dwarf trying to redeem himself. Though I should say, he's pretty well redeemed as it is. The dwarves still call him that, though, just as a kind of a term of endearment, you know? Just harmless fun. Anywho, yes, here he goes. Just be careful there, Cursed Crag. Never know what those elves could be up to. Certainly seems suspicious. Uh, maybe he's uh, feeling a little hesitant. Seems to be taking a roundabout route for some reason. Going around this pond here. Um, Yeah, the elves aren't over there, my friend. There you go. There you go. All right, he's back on track. There you go, Craggy. All right, now he's heading over. Careful, careful, slowly. Oh, there's that sound again. What is... By Idrath's gold. It's a swarm of them. On flyback, both house and butter. Get out of there, Craggy. Yeah, he's running back to the fort. Kind of roundabout, but I'm sure he's going to be fine. The elves are moving now. In the sky and ground. It seems they were extremely prepared this time. Tried to lure us into a trap. Come on, you bastards. Let's do this. For all the gold of Idrath. It's time you bark-biting bastards met the full fury of Northbridge. And with that, we are going to start talking about some behind-the-scenes things. I am sorry for that cliffhanger, but... Sometimes it's just out of my hands. Apologies. Nothing I could do about it, though. Gives us something to look forward to. Anywho, 
Uh, yeah, that's a big elven siege right there. And a significant number of them are mounted on giant flies and giant butterflies. Luckily, the elephants are just normal elephants, not giant elephants. Then we'd be in some big trouble. But I, I don't know whether I, I should be scared or not, I guess. The animals don't wear any armor. So usually you just poke a couple holes in them and, you know, they're down incapacitated. I imagine the giant flies wouldn't be that big of a deal. Oh, that's something I'll touch on really quick. I draw the animals that like, you know, like the elven animals here with armor a lot of the time. And I know they don't wear armor in the game. None of them do. But it's like, why the hell not? You know, like not, not why don't they wear armor? But like, why shouldn't I draw them with armor, right? It's fun. One of my favorite things is trying to draw like beasts of war with armor and stuff. And for a while, you know, I didn't do it because like technically in Dwarf Fortress, they don't wear armor, but it's just really fun. So screw it. I'm going to do it. I don't care. That being said, they do look awfully intimidating sometimes and it just really isn't the case in most cases. Like those war leopards that showed up. Basically nothing. Those guys went right down. Those tricky bastards though. My goodness, those elves. Absolutely ridiculous. It's funny how they're a much bigger threat so far. Actually, you know, it's funny that this fortress here, like normally, traditionally anyways, in Dwarf Fortress, you have problems with the goblins attacking. And then when necromancers were added, I feel like I encounter more zombies and intelligent undead and necromancers than anything. But now with this steam release, it seems that our primary assailants are the amphibian people down underground. Remember, I said that, I mean, that was four sieges in this year here during this episode. Four sieges from them. That's a lot. It's come to my attention that that's not intended to happen. Um, I've heard some pretty fatalist things about the whole underground raider thing, about like the sieges just keep getting bigger and bigger and you know, it's infinite. It, it, that doesn't appear to be the case, not in my experience anyways. I'm pretty sure the underground sieges cap off at 50 individuals, which is still a lot, but they're unarmored, oftentimes they're smaller than dwarves. Usually not a big deal, especially if you set up a little trap hall or something like that. Get them minced up, no problem. And they do provide an awful lot of metal, too, with their supplies they drop. So, you know, it's, it's pretty handy. That being said, actually, just this past week, I played a little extracurricular game of Dwarf Fortress on my Discord server. We're doing a succession game, and I started a new fortress, and I was like, okay, let's get down to those caves. And I went down there, dug around a little bit, and... Like within the first year, we were attacked by reptile people and completely obliterated the few dwarves that I had, like straight off the bat. That's, I mean, that's pretty bad. Usually when you go down to the caves, you're worried about, you know, giant cave spiders or just anything that could pop up down in the caves. But, you know, if you could encounter a siege like that in your first year, like that's, that's a big problem. In a lot of ways, I feel like this version of Dwarf Fortress, it's a lot more user friendly, but I, I also feel like it's a lot more dangerous in a lot of ways too, which is cool. I like that. It's dangerous in more appropriate ways, I feel. More manageable ways. Um, <laughs> that being said, shame on me for last episode saying the stress system is finally in a good place. I'm getting a little annoyed with my military dwarves in Northbridge here. I mentioned that, you know, a couple of them were throwing tantrums or whatever. I didn't really make a big deal of it in this episode, but towards the end of this episode in particular, a couple of them have been throwing tantrums. We retired that one already, but I think two of the others in the military right now are throwing tantrums or just like, you know, in just a pretty severe mental state. And, you know, I don't really know what causes that, to be frank. I mean, I've been playing the game for 11 years, okay? More than that, actually. I've never been able to come to grips with what exactly makes for a good military dwarf. Like, they've got so many little mental traits that seem like they could be good, but then, like, other ones that might be incredibly detrimental. It's hard to parse through it, you know? Like, I don't mind some micromanagement when it's pretty straightforward, you know? Like, setting up the rooms on the bridge here. But, like, when you gotta parse through all that information and kind of, like, figure out which ones would make for a good military dwarf, it's can be difficult. I noticed that three of the dwarves in my current squad are in pretty good moods. The other seven though are fairly miserable. So maybe I just gotta go in and take a look at those three dwarves and see what makes them tick. Maybe we can figure it out from there. But still, like, I don't know why they're, they'd be so much more miserable than all the other dwarves in the fortress. I think I said it last episode that I haven't really had the, the soldiers training all that much. I've kind of just had them, um, like all their labors are turned off so they could just go and mingle and talk and have a good old time but that doesn't seem to do much for them. They don't seem to be reversing 
at all, certainly not quickly. And in the meantime, you know, they're throwing tantrums and, you know, I just, right at the end of this episode, I had a dwarf, one of the soldiers punched uh, someone's guinea pig and killed it. It's a mess. I, I don't really know how the justice system works in this current version. I assume it's the same as it was in the old days, but like, as soon as you assign a captain of the guard, then like, all the criminals start getting beaten, and like, I don't have a captain of the guard here in Northbridge yet, because I don't want to deal with that whole thing. It can make it worse a lot of the times, you know, you get a criminal who's throwing tantrums, and the captain of the guard comes over and beats them for throwing tantrums, that's not going to improve anything, that's going to make it much worse, right? Yeah, I'm not too sure, I'm not too sure. We'll get it figured out though, maybe I'll just have to do a complete military overhaul or something if I feel like I can detect a mental trait that's going to work well with our soldiers. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Also, additional note here before we get wrapped up. I really like that you guys seem to get a kick out of the, the crap that have been thrown up during the ends of the episode here. Not not the fan art. That's not crap. That's absolutely stellar. But, like, just the crap that I do in my, my spare time. Which I'm having a little bit more of, too. I think I said it last episode. You know, I've been wrangling my schedule and found out a way to make the Steam editing work for me. And it's been really great, giving me some free time. And, uh, yeah, so I, I figure I'll just post up some additional things from time to time. Maybe you'll get a kick out of it. As always, I appreciate you guys showing an interest, you know? For me, this whole gig here is like an excited kid showing some stupid little project to people, and then they're, like, really excited to see it. That's what it feels like, I guess. So just to read your good comments and stuff, I, I don't know, I just, I love it. I really get a kick out of it, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you had fun today, and I... Certainly hope to see you next time here in Idrathkor Irol Sazir, Northbridge. And until then, you bearded bastards. <laughs>